Hello from the Scott Learning Center. Uh, welcome to part two of our continuing videos about how a cotton plant thinks. And I know some of you are already already saying that doesn't make any sense. Plants don't think. And that's partly the goal of this conversation today is to talk about how the plant is programmed to do things. When you get to it, uh, there have been a lot of changes that have occurred in cotton, cotton varieties and the culture of cotton in the last 40 or 50 years. We've been talking about some of those changes through our conversations we've been having over the last few weeks. And I thought it was worthwhile to bring up some of the real changes that have occurred. The short answer to the question of how a cotton plant thinks is that it doesn't. We as scientists, as agriculturalists, program the cotton plant to do certain things. We have the ability to manipulate a lot of the components of the cotton genome, including biotechnology and, and introducing uh, genes and traits that we desire the plants to have. We also have the ability to manipulate a little bit of the fundamental nature. When you look into the background of cotton and what it is and, and how it behaves, we really grow two species of cotton in the United States. We refer to those as, as upland and Pima type cottons. The origins of cotton is, are, are unclear. Uh, it comes from a variety of places uh, that have been identified over time. But there are a couple of things about cotton that don't change no matter how we manage or what we do in the breeding process. Number one, it's a perennial plant, which means is a fancy way of saying it comes back if frost doesn't kill it, and frost kills it at most latitudes in the U.S. It's also an indeterminate plant, which is where the sort of the mischief lies in trying to grow cotton. Indeterminate plants, fruit and flower, grow flowers at the same time, or in other words, they are reproductive and vegetative at the same time. When, when you think about what this means, it, it means that we have a need and an ability in many cases to manipulate the relationship between vegetative and reproductive growth. That's really what we talk about when we talk about managing cotton plants with growth regulators. And also another thing to realize in this conversation is cotton is a continuous set of feedback loops. I think about it like a thermostat. If, if the thermostat on the wall is set to cool and it gets hot in the room, it turns on the air conditioning. It does certain things in a certain order to make that happen, and the cotton plant is very similar. The goal of this conversation that we have over the next few uh, sessions of this will be to talk about why the plant does some of the things it does. The fundamental behavior of a cotton plant, and, that, and this to me uh, is, is kind of one of the enlightening parts of the conversation. The fundamental part of the cotton plant's programming is that it wants to be a tree. And when you think about what a perennial indeterminate tree ha tries to do, uh, it, it grows uh, vegetation and it fruits at the same time or flowers at the same time. That provides us a challenge, but it also gives us the opportunity to use cotton in the way that we typically grow cotton around the United States. And that is that we put it in environments that are somewhat stressful, somewhat unknown, because cotton has the ability to tolerate a lot of that kind of abuse in the environment. Now, this is uh, coming toward the end of what I'm going to talk about today. But I wanted to mention it as background when we get into some of the fruiting cycle and some of the fruiting components that we will talk about in the, over the next little while. The overriding programming of a cotton plant or any plant, well, not maybe any, but most plants, is to produce seed. When you think about what that means, the plant sort of defaults back into that mechanism of, of survival because its desire is for its genes its programming is that its genes need to move forward in nature. An underlying factor in that is it's a perennial plant that we grow as an annual. The breeders do have some influence over this relationship. Uh, we can alter determinacy, so we have early and late varieties. We can change the amount of leaf hair that's present, uh, you know, good and bad. We can, we can have more or less leaf hair. And then fiber quality is something we never lose sight of in this whole conversation because fiber quality is something that's greatly changed in the last 20 or 30 years and it's one of those things that we will continue to have a focus on. So the, the cotton plant is really, I think of it as two buckets, a source and a sink. What we're trying to do is develop a source that can make sugar via photosynthesis and then translocate that sugar, move that sugar into fruiting forms which are, are the source of the lint, seed, and fiber that we harvest and sell in the market. 
Now they're interrelated. The source has to be big enough to generate enough fruiting sites that our sink is large enough to absorb the sugar that's made. We have to keep the sinks on the plant, which means we need good fruit retention, and that comes into play with good PGR management and insect management through the season, which has undergone real change in the last few years. So all of these things are interrelated. We're going to talk about some more of those interrelationships over the next couple of, couple of sessions. I want to thank you for listening. Part three of this will be coming shortly, and uh, we look forward to talking to you then. Please come see us at the Learning Center this summer if you can. Thanks.